Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Warfare Ecology. It is Eschatology Tuesday. So make sure that you go ahead and like and share and tell a friend that Warfare Ecology is on the air. So we know today is going to be a phenomenal day with the Lord. So, you know, Dr. Williams is going to bring it like he always does. So prepare yourself. We know that it's going to be great. I mean, I'm excited to see what he's going to talk about today because, you know, it, just in listening to the Eschatology Tuesday, it, it makes me watch the news different and I'm sure that it does you too. So go ahead and get your questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. Now, listen, you know, we've got a lot of things going on. And so yesterday's show, we started out the week with Relationship Monday on Valentine's Day. And there was a very good conversation that went forth yesterday. And I encourage you that if you missed it, to go back and check it out on Facebook at Bishop G. Bloomer or YouTube at the General of Warfare. And so we've got some controversial conversations that are going on throughout the month of February. So uh, Mike Williams will be with us again this Wednesday on Warfare Wednesday, still talking about um, inclusion and is there a hell and all that stuff like that. Thursday, the deliverance team will be here. And then on Friday of this week, Bishop Yvette Flunder will be with us. So we will be having the discussion on same gender loving people and the church or in the church. You do not want to miss this, the controversial conversations. And then next week, uh, George Strader will be with us. We're talking about on uh, the 25th on the uh, talking about shamanism and how did we get here when bishops become warlocks so listen this is our month of february we're having some warfare controversial conversations so these are things that are meant to equip you so that you can get some answers for some things that you may have as well too and so you know what's out there you just got to pay attention and listen that's all it comes down to. So we're getting back to the foundation and we're just talking and trying to create a clear and present message of who Jesus is, period. That's where we are. So prepare yourself. This week is going to be a phenomenal week and I hope that you are ready. So good afternoon, Evelyn. How are you? I'm fine, my dear. How are you? I am doing well. I'm doing well. That's a good report. <laughs> yes, it's Tuesday. <laughs> so, you know, we, we got a lot of stuff going on on Tuesday. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. More <laughs> truth. More truth. Yes, most More definitely. truth. We got a lot of stuff going on. So yes, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what Dr. Williams is going to be talking about today and what yes. he's going to bring forth, because we know this is going to be good. Amen. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we will talk in a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, you know, you guys, we get a lot of questions on Tuesdays. So I want you to make sure that if we are able to open this floor for questions, go ahead and get them in. You know, if you've had questions that you haven't an gotten answered before, ask your question because we want to be able to answer those. And this is the one good thing about, I shouldn't say the one good thing, but it's one of the good things about Warfare Ecology is that we afford you the opportunity to ask questions and get those answered. And so we want to be able to get as many of those in as we possibly can, okay? So make sure when you put your question out there, be as clear and specific on what it is that you're trying to ask so we can get to as many as possible, okay? So put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And so, you know, <clears throat> I had a couple questions, a question that came in a couple times last week about creating a budget. So that's what we're talking about this week. And these are some concepts, you know, some things that I put in place when I put my budget into place and, you know, things that we need to consider. And of course, you know, there's systems out there, there's apps that you can use, you know, pen and paper. It's just all about taking the time down to sit down and look at what you have going on and put some goals in place and put action to it, period. That's what it comes down to. So these are <clears throat> eight, eight uh, I guess we could say tips that I put into place when it came time for me to start setting a budget for myself. And these are things that you can apply for not just your, your, your personal budget, but also your 
business as well too. So number one, you want to gather all your financial documents. It's like, what is that? That's every bill that you got. You need to put all that together, figure out every bill that you got. And then you also want to pull together all of the documentation for the streams of income that you have so that you know how much money you have coming in and how much money you going have going out. And you can't leave anything out because leaving something out makes your budget a little um, missing a few things. It cannot be complete. And so you wanna calculate your income. That's your streams of income. Anything that you're doing to make money that's coming in on a regular basis or however it may be, you need to write that down because you wanna know everything that you have coming so you can properly allocate your money. Thirdly, create a list of monthly expenses. That's everything that you, that you are um, spending money on. And then you wanna determine if these are fixed or variable expenses. Those fixed expenses are expenses that, that kinda, they don't change. So, you know, things that are consistent like your, your rent or your mortgage, you know, we, we have a light bill and water bill and most of the time that fluctuates a little bit. So sometimes that can fall into a fixed and variable expenses are things that you have as far as like credit card payments, you know, food and entertainment and things of that nature. All of that comes into play onto that. And that's the point where you really have to be honest with yourself on the things that you are spending your money on. OK, and then you want to set some goals like i.e. what you for example, like what you what you want to save. You know, if you you know that at the end of the month, you want to try to save an extra hundred dollars or extra two hundred dollars. You need to put that into play, because after you figure out what it is that you have coming in and what it is that you have going out, you will need to make adjustments to the expenses where necessary. Because, you know, of course, you can't adjust what you're going to pay on your mortgage. That's a given. You can't do that. But those variable expenses, that's the place which you have, that you'll have to um, make some adjustments on. And it may be some things that's going to require a little bit of discipline to be able to get it in line to where you are trying to be and go. And so one thing that I also suggest when you do this is to analyze the due dates of your expenses to maximize your cash flow. So, you know, if you if you realize that all of your stuff is due at the first or the 15th, but your your pay schedule happens on the second and the fourth week, then that may not work well for you. So a lot of times in taking a look at the due dates and when it is that the stuff is due, it allows you in some of those a lot of the companies will allow you to customize your due date. So you can say, well, this is when I'm going to pay it. And so it will help you to maximize your cash flow. And last but not least, is just create your budget. Put it to work. Put some action with the things that you just put into place so that you can go ahead and start reaching some goals that you are looking to reach. Okay, so that's that's what I did to put my budget into place. It worked for me. And, you know, I did mine on actually not even pen and paper. I, I put it in my notes section in my phone and I wrote down every bill that I had and when it was due, and I said, this is what we got coming in, this is what's going out, and this is what we're going to do to save some money, and that's what it did. So do what works best for you, just, just a few tips that you can put into place, and from what I gather, a lot of this is kind of kind of runs cr across the board, and this is basically also, just so you know, so if you are a person who isn't, who doesn't have a budget in place, this is to help you get started, so if you've already got a budget in place, then there may be some things that you need to do that a little bit further along to go ahead and maximize your budget, and keep in mind also that when you put a budget into place, you will have to go back and re-examine it, because when income changes or expenses changes and needs change, emergencies come up and things of that nature, the budget can change as well too, okay? So that's what we have. And so you guys, it's Black History Month still. And so we've been talking about some entrepreneurs throughout the, the month that have done some things in history that have just been very, very good, okay? And so all of these people that we're talking about this week are all entrepreneurs and they've done some things to create their own moment in history. All right, so today we will actually be talking about three men, okay? And this is um, Charles Clinton Spalberg, Aaron McDuffie Moore, and John Merrick. And so these three men 
confound the North Carolina Mutual Life Insurance Company in 1898, the now oldest and largest African-American life insurance company in the United States. At the time, all three men were members of the Durham community, Spalding, the general manager of the grocery company, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Moore was a practicing physician and Merrick an entrepreneur with barbershops across Durham. At that time, Durham was referred to as Black Wall Street. Notably for the economic success Blacks were seeing through business, the company still stands today with assets estimated at $162 million. So that right there is actually a little bit of Black history for Raleigh the Raleigh Durham area. And so I encourage you to keep doing the things that you do, keep pressing and keep striving and let that thing that you end up making the first be your moment in black history. Okay. So I hope that you guys are ready for today. Dr. Williams will be joining us shortly. So go ahead and get those questions ready. Put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And while you're doing that, go ahead and send us your testimony. Tell us how the Lord is moving on your behalf, because well, I know he is, and you know he is too. So let your story serve as that elimination of the process blessing so that we can just share your story and people can hear it and be encouraged and know who the God is that we serve. So email us at media at bishopbloomer.com. And then uh, our food giveaway is tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow is February the 16th. And we will be at Bethel Family Worship Center. The food giveaway will start at 11 a.m. So I encourage you to get there a little early because people start lining up at around 10 o'clock. So you do not want to miss this. So like I said, we'll be at Bethel Family Worship Center at 515 Dowd Street in Durham, North Carolina. And so we thank you for all the seeds that you continue to sow into this ministry because it's allowing us to be a blessing to the community, not just stateside, but also abroad. There's so many things that are going on that we're working on. And so we thank you for standing strong with us. <clears throat> all right, so apostolic prophetic reset with the bishop so that is going to start march 4th through the 5th now i encourage you that if you want to be in the building for this this teaching that is getting ready to go forth just to reset us and so that we can establish where we are for the time that we are in so this is a conference that is for leaders leaders so if you are a leader Bring your, your top tier leaders with you, your top two, three with you so that you guys can sit down and gain this information so that you can galvanize and move forward to where we need to be. So I encourage you to go ahead and claim your spot today at apostolicprophetic.reset.eventbrite.com. It is going to be great. So if you're going to join us in the building, keep in mind that seating is very, very limited. So if you want to be in the building, you might want to claim that spot today. But if you can also tune in virtually, so this is going to be something that you do not want to miss. March 4th through the 5th, that's Friday and Saturday. We're going to start at 9 a.m. in the morning, go to about 12 on Friday, and then come back at 7 p.m. that night. And Saturday from 9 to 1, the Apostolic Prophetic Reset with the bishop so you know we have a couple other events that will be coming up after this so we'll be preparing for palm sunday april 10th easter on april 17th mother's day on may 8th uh, pentecost sunday on june 5th and father's day on june 19th so i encourage you to follow bishop g bloomer on facebook instagram or twitter just so that you can stay connected because some of these events will have an opportunity to maybe be in the building as well too and some will be virtual so just make sure that you stay tuned so that you can stay connected and join us where we are so i hope that you guys are ready it is going to be a great day today so go ahead and get those questions ready put your questions in the chat or email us at media at bishopbloomer.com all right evelyn so let's talk a little bit I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So did you see any of the show yesterday? No, ma'am. I missed it. I okay. missed it. I'm so sorry. I missed it. But I'm going to tune in tonight. 
Oh yeah, you need to go back and check it out. Yesterday's show was okay. really good. You know, there was a lot of conversation that went forth and stuff like that. You know, okay. And it was just, it was really good. Okay. I can't, I can't put it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> it was just good. And, you know, and there was because there was a comment that Bishop made about discipline. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. when you're single and having to have discipline. Yes. Right there, got to check it out from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. You know, because that sounds good. It is. Yeah, that sounds it good is. for all of us. <laughs> Are you saying like that, Evelyn? <laughs> but you know what? But that's the thing, though, because no matter what it is that we do, mm-hmm. it takes discipline. Yeah. Every yeah. day that we get on the show to get into place, it's mm-hmm. discipline because mm-hmm. we know this is what we got to do. So mm-hmm. we structure our day. We do what we mm-hmm. have to do. And it's a mm-hmm. discipline. We've been sitting here, you know, at home or, you know, in the car yeah. or on, you know, wherever we are yes. on the show every day. And mm-hmm. that just doesn't happen by chance. Right. You know. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's, man, that's just my opinion. You know. That sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. And it, we and have it, to have a lot of stuff inside to, you know, be structured. It is. It mm-hmm. is. You know, so it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's amazing that the things that you can accomplish, mm-hmm. just sit down and discipline yourself, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it's, it's amazing because I know, like, I remember, you know, before, you know, pre pandemic, let's put it like that. Okay. You know, when people will be going to school and stuff like that, there was such a, um, a stigma against getting okay. your education online, going okay. to university and mm-hmm. it, online mm-hmm. and so it's like oh my gosh you, you ain't even go in the building you got your degree online mm-hmm. so when people would find that out they would tend to not credit you with this with this much you know I've seen that you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. look at it now yeah <laughs> where'd you get your, your degree oh online at SNHU <laughs> exactly but see the one thing that a lot of people didn't realize or don't realize is, is that mm-hmm. it's a whole nother ball game when you decide to go to school or do yeah. whatever it is that you're going to do online, mm-hmm. because yeah. it takes a discipline to be able to do that. The assignment, and this is when it's due. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I you agree. may have some discussion questions in between and yes. stuff like that, but other than that, it's up to mm-hmm. you to discipline yes. yourself to get the work done. And Amen. so that right there in itself makes getting your degree online a little bit more difficult than what people yeah. think. I'm yeah. Just, when those people say they worked for it, they worked they for did. it. Yeah. They, and, you know, just because you don't go in a building doesn't mean anything, you know. Right. The assignment is due by 11.59 p.m. And you, <laughs> you done been at work all day and just got off at 9 o'clock at night. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Yeah. Discipline. Yeah. That's that's I like I, that. Yeah. That's yeah. a good word. Yeah, yeah, all of us need to hold on to that word. And oh, that's yeah. for any part of our lives. Any exactly. Part. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You gotta have some type of discipline. Yeah, I can appreciate that. Yeah. It I will really can. But I am gonna watch the show. I'll check it out this evening. Yeah, go back and check it out. You go enjoy. I will. <laughs> I will. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> good though so you know yesterday was valentine's day and- yes that was so sweet yeah i got my <laughs> grandbabies their stuff that that was my sweetheart those are my sweethearts oh. yeah. i gave them um teddy bears and um my son i gave him like a little packet of, of little gifts mm-hmm. and um he said my you always doing something i said i'll take it back no no <laughs> You know, they're not giving a gift back, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it was good to see smiling faces of my kids, okay. my grandkids, you know, and uh, it, it was nice, it was fun. So, I'm going to ask you this question So, mm-hmm. what, what do you think that it shows a child whenever you know we get to Valentine's Day and how we show you know we give them gifts and stuff like that? What kind of message does that send to the child? Just showing love that you can love and appreciate somebody. Um, Just as another day within a whole year to show some special stuff. You know, you love them all year long. Yes. And there are little things you're able to do. And then there's some things you can't. Mm -hmm. But for those who can't, that's your chance. 
here's the 14th of February. You forgot the last six, seven, eight, nine months. So pull out, pull out the closet, pull it out. Just get the guns out. Do good. <laughs> it's all an opportunity just to show more love. Mm-hmm. Just to show love. Yes, to show love. So mm-hmm. do you think that there has to be some type of action to show love? I think that's what we were question all week. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think love is an action word. Mm-hmm. It is. I can feel it all day long and I can stand there and give you goo-goo eyes and, and all that good stuff. Um, you may see it. You might think you feel it and you're saying, oh, I don't know. I really don't know how she feels. She just, she doesn't say anything to me. You know, she's just standing there and look at me. I think L-O-V-E is action. Yes, I do. Too. <laughs> and, uh, I do. And then, yeah. you know, because I mean, now, yeah, some things is it's understood and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And it's like for me, you can you can tell me you love me all day long. Mm-hmm. Your actions say differently, I will never believe you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. And that has happened to so many people. Mm-hmm. That's why that word is an action word. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I appreciate it when you say it. <laughs> And you know it's there. Yeah, exactly. it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel good. Of course it does. Who 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 doesn't want to feel loved? I know. I know. A beautiful feeling. It is. It's like, oh, he loves me. Good God, what am I gonna do? <laughs> All those little giddy feelings. <laughs> I was about it's to a beautiful that word. Song. But that was oh no, you weren't. Which one? No, Which one? But it wasn't no um uh it wasn't no uh no Christian song, so we're gonna leave it. That's that okay. <laughs> but and I don't remember all the words, but okay, all right. <laughs> and so we're gonna leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. You know, we can get joy from any sector to tell oh, the yeah. truth you know, the country Western or whatever, you know, one of my favorite country Western songs is, um, you got to know when to hold it. All right, Kenny. <laughs> know when to fold them. Yes. <laughs> know when to walk away. Know oh, when to run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yes. And that tells a story. It I does. use that line a lot. It, I use it a lot. And I do too. Mm-hmm. Because you know, it's one of those things it's like because that whole you got to know when to hold them yes right and know when to fold them mm-hmm. that's wisdom that's right that's All right that you got to know exactly. <laughs> and then sometimes you know, we can we can be in situations and hold too yeah. long that's no right you should have folded mm-hmm. 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 i so, say know when to walk away and when to run now you can walk away. It might be too slow because it grab your arm, but you better know when to run. <laughs> exactly. I love that little song. I love it. You know, right. you know and for me, I always like that song too. Uh-huh. But um, there was a <laughs> there was one that I used to like, and I used to hear it all the time. What's but that? Um, I don't really remember all of the words to the song. Okay. Okay. Just. Uh, just parts of it and uh, okay. um, and it just says I got friends in low places <laughs> go ahead go ahead <laughs> but look that's all I and I think that was Garth Brooks or okay. or it might have been something that was saying by Alabama at one point but I mm-hmm. got friends in low places where the anyway we can't do that one on the air we can't do that one okay but but for that thing with the with the I got friends in low places it's not that I got friends in low places even though I may and may not Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's just all about that we have people in our lives that are in different places that's true you know yeah Mm -hmm. we may run in the same circles Mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that our position in life is the same that's so true because sometimes, you know, and it, they, you know, especially it makes me think about, you know, they're saying that, you know, if you're the smartest one in the room, then you need to find a new room. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying? so at some point, if you're the smartest one in the room, that means you got friends in low places, right? Okay. I mean, okay. That, 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 that makes that's sense. 
That's just my thoughts. Okay. That's but that me. makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just all about how you see people and just, mm-hmm. just whenever Bishop always says, you know, to take a person at their level of presentation, mm-hmm. that is key. Mm-hmm. It really is because just because a person is not educated and doesn't have 50 million degrees and stuff like that does not mean that they're not intelligent does not mean that they are not smart because sometimes Mm -hmm. knowledge is gained through experience. Amen. Yes. It can't be taught through a textbook. It cannot. You won't receive it if it's being taught to you. Right. (laughs) Sometimes you gain something because uh, you went through it, you lived it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Mm -hmm. now let me tell you what you, what, what, what not to do on that. Don't do that. Don't touch right there. You need to run. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yeah. don't walk mm-hmm. away run <laughs> that's so true that is so true I just love that song it just came to me so quick I said yes that was my favorite country western song <laughs> I did I used to I used to love that one too because and it's one of those things that um that it's true mm-hmm. and no matter what you know it never fails. It's true. Mm-hmm. You gotta mm-hmm. know when to know when to fold them. And that applies mm-hmm. in almost any situation that we have in our lives. Yes. Yes. I like it. It speaks to me and I've been able to speak and share with my family. <laughs> and even some people that I may have run across in life that seem to have fit in the situation. And just by saying those few words, it gave them too something to think about. And so it was just, it's just been a good thing for me. I really like that. I really do. Yeah. And I'd like uh, that scripture that Bishop pulled up last week. Um, I, I think it was an Ecclesiastes um, about the wisdom is a defense mm-hmm. and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Wow. And I, I kept reading over that too. And I said, wow, you know, it does. It does. It makes more sense of just life. And what, so much that the wisdom does. We know money. We, we put that almost anywhere. Mm-hmm. But when it says it's a defense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The word gives us so much to think about. It does. If we would it, just give it a chance. It does. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. The, the word will give us so much to think about and the word will tell us about ourselves. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. And it never fails. There's, there's, there's not a day that goes by that I don't read and study that I don't see myself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, from a book that was written ages ago yes that can speak Mm -hmm. something that is relevant to me and my life today Mm -hmm. today today this very Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's that's why it's important that when we you know sometimes we have to find scriptures that we can hang on to yes things that will get us through things that will encourage us you know and just where we are, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, you can sit down, you know, rattle off a hundred million scriptures and stuff like that. Yeah. But when you've been through something and mm-hmm. you've had an experience with God, there's mm-hmm. some of these scriptures that will, that will ring true in your heart that will stick with you for days. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just does. So mm-hmm. I, have, I have, what's, what's, what's your go-to scripture, Evelyn? Oh gosh, I have a few. <laughs> such as greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world I, and I call myself speaking that out on many occasions mm-hmm. um, through the day um, mm, then they're, they're not coming um, for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love power and of a sound mind you know those things that seemingly give me direction and give me hope and give me something to stand on and hold on to. You yeah. Know, it's that those, they mean a lot. Mm-hmm. They mean a lot. I have, I 
have a few of them, and I th I think that that's here. Of, yeah. What and are I, they? Um, Psalms one twenty one. I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence okay. my help, my help mm -hmm. comes from the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, James one. I think it starts at verse two. Uh, Count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptation. Okay. Knowing mm -hmm. this, the trying of your faith worketh patience, mm -hmm. so that patience may have a perfect work, so that you may be perfect and entire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think it's Romans. Uh, all of creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Okay. Okay. I remember that. Mm -hmm. yes. And they're, then. They're good. And then, you know, his grace is sufficient. Amen. Yes. <laughs> my God shall yeah. supply all my need according to his riches and glory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's so many, but I think that each one is of the ones that I, that I named off were scriptures that, 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 that resonated in my spirit when I was going through something. Yes. And I guess it sounds like I've been through a lot, don't it? But <laughs> it doesn't take much when you're grabbing scripture. No, mm -mm. you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. but, you know, <laughs> it's just, that's just what it is. And then just knowing that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the that's son. Right. He should repent. If he said it, he will All do right. it. He will bring mm -hmm. it to heaven. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, and the be not conformed to this world. But yes. be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yes. And you may yes. prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Come on, Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You know, and we start preaching to ourselves and that's a good thing. Exactly. Because sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. Isn't that what mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a thing that song? Was that Donnie McClurkin? Sometimes you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna do that to the people. Go ahead. <laughs> but it's the truth though. We do. Yeah. And yeah. you know, because you know, a lot of times we'll be we'll find ourselves in situations and you will find you will think that you were alone. Yeah. And because you don't see anybody or no one's calling and checking on you, that don't mean mm -hmm. you're wrong. That's right. A lot of the times you will find your one. Once you come out of a situation, you will realize that um, there are people that are praying for you that you don't even know they're praying for you. That is so true, my dear. Because you'll find yourself in something and, and, and God will just put you on their heart. And because mm -hmm. they, they are a praying person, they're not going to pick up the phone and call you and say, you know, the Lord told me to pray for you today. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like that. mm -hmm. That's just me. Mm -hmm. But you know, and then sometimes it, you can be sitting there and be going through and be stressed out. And then all of a sudden, some, a text message will come through and they'll say, you know what? I pray that you're having a good day today. Be mm -hmm. blessed. Little yes. sad things. And that feels so good. It does, hands down. Well, it looks like our bishop is here. Yes, he is. I tell you, I'm here today and God bless uh, you. How are you doing today, um, Elder Daniels and Elder Father. Corbett? Doing fine, sir. Amen. So I'm going to be turning this over to the uh, to the man of God this afternoon for eschatology. Those of you who have questions, get it into the chat, and uh, uh, let's see where the program is uh, going to go today. Believe in God for just a great, great time in the Word. While we're waiting on the man of God to sign on with us. I want to open up the heavens as quickly as I possibly can. But let me say this to you. Um, we're having an apostolic prophetic um, uh, encounter, a reset. And um, I we have limited uh, seating uh, in the place that we're going to be in because we want it to be intimate at the same time, following all of the uh, uh, social distancing guidelines that are possible and necessary. The prophetic, uh, apostolic prophetic reset with Bishop Bloomer. It's at Launch Ministries 3013 Barrow uh, Road, uh, Barrow Drive, I'm sorry, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Registration is 120. 
uh, virtual or in person. This gives a lot of people the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, and we're going to be dealing with a lot of topics, uh, but it's a leaders, leaders uh, conference. And I'm asking the leaders to come with their leaders uh, to this uh, prophetic apostolic event. Uh, I want you to claim your spot right now, www uh, dot apostolic prophetic reset at eventbrite uh, um, dot com eventbrite dot com it is March the 4th and the 5th you're going to blink and March is going to already be here we'll be into the third quarter of this year already it is Friday at 9 a.m. to 12 uh, noon and then again at 7 p.m. then Saturday it's from 9 to 1 great great phenomenal discussions on warfare, on strategy, on the marketplace, on business. It, you don't want to, um, you don't want to, uh, uh, to miss this. And so before the program goes off today, I like to uh, have maybe 20, uh, 20 to 25 people uh, to register, to go to Eventbrite and register to spend time with uh, Bishop Bloomer, his team and his staff and his his ministers uh, for this time of of this serious serious time. Now, the month of February is um, has been designated for controversial conversations, and so it looked like even on yesterday um, um, uh, we 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 had one like it becomes it's confrontational. It's uh, it's open. So yesterday wasn't the day that we were going to do it, but it's like the Holy Spirit just jumped in there uh, with us on 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 yesterday. And, um, you know, every Tuesday and the last Tuesday, it was like that people in some of their questions uh, were, you know, kind of confront confrontational and uh, but man of God handled it well. And uh, God blessed us and he's going to bless us. Um, today. So I want, uh, I know somebody said, well, Bishop is uh, announcing the go to Eventbrite. He's going to give us a discount. You got that right. My discount is 120. It is 120. It's 120. I don't know why you would want to uh, beat that price down any. Uh, it's 120 in the upper room. It is believed that Noah, that, that Adam was in the garden 120 years before uh, Eve came into the uh, in, in, into play. Uh, 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 the, the, the six barrels of, of 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 water after the purification of the Jews, each holding uh, uh, six gallons of uh, twenty gallons apiece. That's a hundred and twenty. I mean, just hundred and twenty. Hundred Moses were hundred and twenty when his eyes is not dim, neither was any of his natural forces abated. 120, 120, and we're going to experience a, 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 a great, great outpouring by the Holy Ghost on those uh, uh, two days and those services that are getting ready to happen. Uh, when the man of God comes on today, he will uh, carry you into eschatology and he's going to be teaching. And I'm going to be in prayer and intercession as I am preparing for some of um, our most important um, our most important interviews that we've had on 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 air. Um, the uh, Monday, uh, well Wednesday, we will be having Mike Williams on with us, and then on Friday, Bishop Yvette Flunder, and then uh, on the next Friday after that, we will be having. Uh, um, uh, uh, George Strata, uh, um, uh, Mike Williams is helping us as we're talking uh, and dealing with uh, the, how can I say, it? Uh, it is the, uh, the hellfire and brimstone, uh, does hell exist, the existence of hell, which carries us into the beginning of things and the, the conversation has been outstanding. Uh, Yvette Flanders, we're going to have some provocative discussions about uh, gender and um, same sex and um, uh, uh, 
why is the church filling up with it? Is the church open to it, against it, is closed to it? Uh, how can uh, great bishops, daughters, and sons in ministry wind up with something that is contrary to the doctrine and the gospel that we have been preaching and still stay in the church and still stay with God? And we great discussion. And then uh, when you go into the land which the Lord has sworn unto your forefathers, he said, I dare you to do the things that they have done. And um, he said, you not, should not have any fellowship with one who has a familiar spirit or a witch or a warlock. And we're going to be dealing with those uh, topics uh, that are coming up. I think it's just going to be a phenomenal time in the Lord. All right. I'm going to ask today for three people to sow that seed of 93 intercessors to sow the seed of 93 to sow the seed of 27 and and 10 to sow the seed of 21 whatever the financial challenge is today i'm believing god for it we do have a we do have a financial challenge today of fifteen hundred dollars and i pray that when we meet that that doubles it doubles and i can continue with my uh, missions endeavors so if we don't do anything today, I want us to meet and reach that seed of 1,500, which is not that hard. 15 people sowing the seed of 100, we'll have it made and it will happen for us, all right? Uh, the $90 seed is, uh, um, is the heavens open up and a dove comes down and he hears a voice. Is it a process of the elimination blessing out of Matthews 3, 16 and 17? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased with. A heavenly proclamation of your earthly stand happens when you're baptized and you obey God. The heavens opens up for you in that area. 90 is the number of days that the Ark of the Covenant was at Obadiah's house before leaving the Benedad's house uh, for 20 years. It is the process of the elimination blessing. And I believe that that is going to happen to you in your life. Then 27, Kalf Zen, an open hand in the service of spiritual warfare. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that when you go, you shall not go empty. I don't have time to talk about that today, but that's a powerful, powerful statement. And it's a powerful, powerful promise that God made that when you go in, you will not come out the way that you went in. And so go in, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh empty-handed because when you come out you will not come out empty-handed you will have resources it's also calf zen it's an open hand in the service of spiritual warfare is one of those judah praises uh um and judah is an open palm at the throat of your enemy the more you praise god uh, your palm becomes a fist and so your praise is designed to choke the hell out of what's been choking the hell out of you I'm going to ask you to get your seed and sow that in the name of Jesus on behalf of, of this great, 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 great service today. Three of you are interceding with uh, warfare and three of you are seeding on the process of the elimination blessing. And then 21, uh, 10 of you is going to be sowing 21. 21 is angelic traffic. I mean, can you imagine angels on assignment or angels in the atmosphere or angels on the move on your behalf? Behold, I will send my angel before you to keep you in the way to bring you to the place that I have prepared for you. Obey his voice and provoke him not for he would not uh, pardon your transgressions for my name is in him. Exodus 23, 20 and 21. All right. This is the moment and this is the hour. It's that Tuesday and it's time for you to get your seed in your hand and intercede on behalf of every person. Let me have those numbers if I can. Every person who is watching on whatever platform you'll be watching from, I'm going to ask you right now to stand in and stand back and begin to pray as the intercessors open up the heavens through their obedience in their seed. Three is sowing 90, three is sowing 27, 21, I mean, 10 is sowing 21. I don't know why I keep on saying 21 is sowing 21. Maybe this is locked in my head. So God do it for us. But 10 is sowing 21. Dollar sign, general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844 
889-1559. Dollar sign General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Now, there are three of you watching whose assignment is 90. Stop what you're doing, sow that $90 seed. There are three that is watching. Your seed is 27. Stop what you're doing, release that $27 uh, dollar seed. 10 of you watching, your assignment is 21. He gave that seed for you to sow. It is not yours. It belongs to God. You're going to sow the 21. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844 844- 889-1559. Get that seed and get it in the ground and watch God cause miracles to overflow and overtake us here today at Warfare Ecology. I want to encourage those of you uh, to get your questions in and get your questions in the chat so we can ask the man of God when you uh, when he comes on. Uh, to answer those questions and don't be shy and don't shy away from any question that you have and would like to access it's all right with us even the questions that you asked on last week it is all right with us all right dollar sign general of warfare zell bloomer at bishopbloomer.com paypal me ggb ministries text to give text bloomer to 844 844- 889-1559. Three are sowing 90. Three is sowing 27. And 10 is sowing 21. Uh, 90, 27, uh, uh, 21. All three of those numbers together comes up to 138, I believe that is. 138. That 138 seed is a combined seed. And I'm going to be believing God for five persons uh, to do that today, five persons to do that combined seed. Let me get myself together and ready in the name of Jesus. All right, dollar sign general of warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844 889 15. 59 uh, payment link email media at bishopbloomer.com media at bishopbloomer.com all right three is sewing uh 90 three is sewing 27 and um 10 is sewing 21 21 now father i just thank you today i pray for bountiful blessings to be bestowed upon this house and upon your people as we go forth. We pray that you would anoint the man of God and touch him and give him revelation that he did not prepare to preach. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit blow in his sails of knowledge, uh, cause the tithe to come in. For when the tithe rises, all of the ships rise at the same time. Cause there to be a rising this afternoon in the name of Jesus. Father, we just believe you for financial breakthrough on behalf of every listener and watcher who will be participating in this program today in the name of Jesus. We just give your name praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Like and share, share and like uh, uh, um, and uh, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or Zoom, that's wonderful. Let's do this together as we all come in and uh, uh, allow the Lord to bless us and bless us real good. All right. Uh, where's my 90s at right now? Where's my three people that's doing the 90? I promise you, you heard God. Release it. And the minute you release it, things are going to break for us over the entire 
program. That's your assignment. You're an intercessor. You're a financial intercessor. And you start off interceding with your seed. As Proverbs says that finances is a defense. If you don't believe that finances is a defense, get in trouble. Get in trouble and don't have no money. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Payment link, uh, um, media at Bishop Bloomer. No, media uh, at, yeah, at bishopbloomer.com. Media at bishopbloomer.com. All right, people of God, let's do this today in the name of Jesus. Get ready, <clears throat> sorry, to be blessed this afternoon. I want to encourage all of you. I want to encourage all of you to get your uh, to get your questions and get ready uh, because uh, you are about to be challenged with the word that comes from the man of God. Three is sowing ninety. Three is sowing twenty-seven, and three uh, and ten is sowing twenty-one. In the name of Jesus. All right, uh, let's do this one more time. The man of God is already in. Let's do this one more time. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Uh, uh, those of you who want to put it on your credit card, remember we have a fifteen. Hundred dollar challenge today, fifteen hundred dollar challenge today for our missions program. We raise the fifteen, uh, we get an additional fifteen, so we're able to do warfare ecology, do what we do here, and also help with our missions program. And I believe that there's one person watching or three people watching that will make that come true over and above. I believe there's three people watching with a seed of five hundred can release it just like that, and there's one person that is watching that can release that seed of fifteen hundred, and I just believe that. In Jesus' name. Father, again, I pray that you would cause a supernatural wind to blow in the sails of the man of God as he teaches this afternoon that wisdom, that wisdom and knowledge and revelation woo, shall be our portion and that the prophetic shall flow today, breaking chains and destroying yokes in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dr. Williams, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful, Bishop. How are you today? I'm absolutely um, excited about uh, what we're going to experience. I think we ended last week with, uh, with, uh, with, a, with a mighty time. Some people got off their chest what they've been holding in their heart for a little while, got their little behind spanked, and uh, some apologized over the, over the week, and we're ready to ride it, it, it out. Uh, I want to challenge the uh, the people or uh, get their seed challenge in. And then when you start teaching, I'm going to go blank for a little while because I'm working on a project that I need about 30, 40 minutes running late on. And uh, I'll bounce back in while the teaching is going on. So uh, what is our seed challenge for God's people today? Bishop, I am... Um... I'm just in a really unique place, so pray for me right now. But mm -hmm. uh, God, I would say that um, right now, I just think it's important that we believe God for the vision that we have. And I think that's the first thing that I want to say. And that is that believing God for the vision that you have, you before you even want to release a seed, have a place that you are purposing that seed, mm -hmm. your vision, your your something that that seed needs a purpose. And when that seed has a purpose, then it can fulfill that kind of purpose uh, in your life. I believe that if every individual would then just be simple enough to say, you know what, I'm going to sow today $100, just $100 that I'm going to sow today, $100. Uh, I believe that there are some people, even though um, you know, uh, we're sowing $100. There's a few people that have a different dimension of means and because they have a different dimension of means and $100 does not challenge their faith. 
And faith, when you're sowing seed, faith should be challenged. My conviction is that faith really should be challenged mm -hmm. uh, because it, without, without faith being challenged, God is not pleased. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, um, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so faith and moving in that realm is a pleasure or a pleasing of God. And so those individuals that can sow that 100, then sow that 100. But those individuals that have the ability to sow more, you can sow 10 times that, 1,000, because 1,000 is what challenges your faith. Five times that, 500, because that's what challenges your faith. Then sow where your faith is challenged so that there is a pleasing when it comes to God, when it comes to the faith aspect of it, but also the fulfillment of that, Second like Corinthians, um, the ninth chapter, the sixth to the eighth verse, he says that you'll, when you sow bountifully, you'll reap bountifully, he says, and I will make all grace abound towards you. For those individuals, uh, because we're going to go into a teaching that is probably going to be um, a bit more controversial, and, um, and I don't mind. You know, um, I just I don't mind I, I don't mind going into an area of controversy so that it's important that people open up their eyes and say, hmm, never thought about it like that. All right. And so we're solving today based on um, based on our covenant with the Lord. You have a place for that seed that you want that seed to be connected to. So right now, um, dollar sign general of warfare. Um, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal, PayPal me dot, um, I'm sorry, PayPal, um, PayPal um, me dot forward slash GGB Ministries. And I keep putting that dot in the wrong place. PayPal dot me forward slash GGB Ministries. Then text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You can mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries. Uh, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. You can do GiveLify if you want to give that way and to put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box of GiveLify and you can give that way. You can do payment link and it's an email and you can do that at media um, at uh, bishopbloomer.com, media at bishopbloomer.com, and you can sew that way. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, and that is um, that is Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, and Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. You can mail it to 1822 Short Road, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. And as we ask you and we continue to ask you because this is two ministries that are working effectively together to split that seed and when you split that seed double the impact um, connected to that seed because one of the things that I believe in, and that is that when you do something and you're believing God in the double then there are things that you're doing you're splitting the seed and when you split that seed, a split seed begins growth immediately. And I'll say that one more time. A split seed begins growth immediately. That is connected to John 12 and 24. A split seed begins growth immediately. And so we have to understand the value of that seed because when a seed splits, the seed dies. When a, split, uh, when a seed splits, the seed dies. Um, Evelyn, are you here with me? Yes, sir, I am. God almighty, I love Evelyn so much. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, Evelyn, if you would, would you go to John uh, 12 and 24 uh, for me just for a second? Because I want to make sure that we, that we understand about the concept or the law uh, of God when it comes to seeds that split, uh, what happens with, uh, would, yes, you, uh, would you read that for me, please? And it reads, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. All right, except a corn of wheat go into the ground, 
all right? You're sowing and you're sowing into the ground, you're sowing to the atmosphere, and the scripture says it dies. Now that, that point of death means it is no longer what it was. It dies. And how does, how does the seed die? It splits, it breaks, it splits. And he says, but if it dies, it will bring forth much fruit. That's why we say, because a lot of times people ask the question, people ask the question, well, what does that mean when you say split the seed? Okay, everything that we do is by biblical law, principle, and concept, period, period. You know, and so this is why we have to understand it. And this is why I tell people that watching Warfare Ecology every week sharpens you. Iron needs to be sharpened, but it can't be sharpened by wood. It can't be sharpened by, it can't be sharpened by um, sand. It has to be sharpened by iron. And the way that your iron is going to be sharpened is that you're connecting to something that is, that is, that understands the value of the kingdom of God. And when it understands the value of the kingdom of God and, it under, and there's an understanding concerning the word of God, now we got it, all right? And so this is important uh, for the body of Christ in our sowing and, and our believing God and our trusting God because understanding, and please note that understanding is the, is the birthbed of wisdom. Understanding is the birthbed of wisdom. There is no person that has wisdom that did not have to go through understanding. Understanding is the birthbed of wisdom. It is based on Proverbs, the fourth chapter and the seventh verse. Uh, Evelyn, would you read that for me just for a second so people can understand where ultimately wisdom comes from? And that was Proverbs. Proverbs four and seven. Four and seven, okay. Yeah. And it reads thus, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom. And all thy getting, get what? An understanding. He says now, wisdom is the principal thing. So wisdom is the result of something. What is it the result of? It's the result of understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing, get wisdom. But in all thy getting, how that you gather that wisdom is understanding. And understanding ultimately is where wisdom comes from. Evelyn, if you would, because there are some people that may be challenged with that, so they need a confirmation of that. All right, so let's go to Kings, the third chapter. First Kings? First Kings, the third chapter. Let's take a look. All right, and we look at First Kings, the third chapter. Um, I want you to uh, look at, and you're going to read just a little bit because, and I need, I need to, you to read a little bit so that you've started the third verse. You're going to read a little bit so that we add support to Proverbs four and seven. So start at the first verse and then go ahead and read, and I'll interrupt when when that point is made. Go ahead. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David his father. Only he sacrificed and burnt incense of high places. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said, ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David, my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I might discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? Okay, give me a second here. Now, Evelyn, 
the, the beginning of that ninth verse, what did Solomon ask for? An understanding heart. That's what he asked for. He asked for an understanding heart. Solomon did not ask for wisdom. He asked for an understanding heart because understanding is the birthplace of wisdom. Now, read the 10th verse and watch what happens and watch the switch. Go ahead. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. Stop. So that they mm-hmm. Wait a minute. Okay. He said, I want understanding. God confirms it in the B clause of 11 and said, you've asked for understanding to discern judgment. And God switches it in verse 12 and says, I have given you wise and understanding heart. Understanding being the birthplace of wisdom. This is why Proverbs 4 and 7, this is not just a scripture. It is a principle and a law. Those of you that watch Warfare Ecology, you're not just getting a good teaching. You're getting understanding. Amen. And understanding leads to wisdom. It leads to wisdom. That's why you watch every week, because it leads ultimately to wisdom. And this is why understanding becomes key for each and every individual, because we have to recognize at that point that the more understanding I get, the more wisdom I have in that place. Let me say it another way. The more understanding I get in a subject, I become wise in that subject. That's key. Every time you get understanding in an area, you gain a wisdom in that area that nobody else has if they're not seeking an understanding in that area. That's why you have a doctor. A doctor can be a general practitioner, but then you have a cardiologist. Why? Because he sought understanding concerning the heart that the general practitioner did not do. And this is why you have now a wisdom in eschatology, because every week, what are you getting? Understanding. And understanding leads to wisdom. It leads to wisdom because understanding, understanding merged with a knowledge, ultimately wisdom has to show up. It has to show up. It has to show up. It has to show up. Uh, all right. And so now we're going to deal with eschatology in an, an advanced kind of way because we've given you certain things, but we're getting ready to shake up some things in a bit. And the reason that we've got to shake it up is so that we are not, we don't misunderstand anything. We got to make sure this is why when you are doing things connected to understanding, revelation, then what do you do? That is good ground. That is good ground. That is good. Oh. All right. So let me look. Um, let me look at, um, let me look at a scripture here. Um, and um, uh, Evelyn, Okay, so let's go to Matthew. I told you, I'm going to shake things up today. I'm going to shake it up today because I am going to make sure that we are clear when it comes to scripture. I am going to go ABC, one, two, three today. Go to Matthew 13, verses 18. And in fact, you know what? Yeah, verses 18 to 23. We're going to make some good sense today so that people have an understanding. 
Start, started the 18th verse, Matthew 13, and started 18. Go ahead, because now, for those of you that are asking what's going on right now, what's going on right now, I'm showing you laws and principles of the kingdom of God. That's what I'm showing. When you're going after eschatology, when you're learning certain things, you have to know the algorithm or the system of God to see how it works. Without understanding that, you have nothing but guesswork. This is why if somebody tries to challenge you, they don't understand the algorithm of God, the system of God. So let's look at it because it started the 18th verse and it's going to make sense. Because now the word understanding is going to start grabbing at you. You've heard that word and you know understanding leads to wisdom. All right, go ahead. Go start at the 18th verse and let's read. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Stop and understandeth it not. When you don't understand something, you attack it. When you don't understand something, you don't like it. When you don't understand something, it's not, it's not sown into your heart. And so therefore you have issue with it just because understand algebra doesn't mean that algebra don't work just because you don't understand physics doesn't mean physics don't work the person that flunks physics says oh it's stupid no it's not stupid you just don't have understanding but those that have understanding have a wisdom in physics that you don't have watch this now the scripture is talking about the word when a person hears the word, what is, what is faith? Faith, according to the word of God, according to Romans 10 and 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But watch this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, but there's a key point of that. Faith can't come just by hearing something that you don't understand. So now look at that 19th verse. I'm going to make this real clear today. All right. And when you don't understand the word of God, the Bible says that the wicked one, the Satan, catches away that that has been sown in his heart, which means the word got in, the seed got in. But then the, the enemy was able to snatch it out because what covers your seed is understanding. If I make a trench and I throw seed in there. It still ain't gonna work until I cover it. Mm -hmm. Understanding is the covering of the sea. Go to 20th verse, if you would, Evelyn. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. That means you, you hear the word of God at your church, you shouting and jumping, talking about uh, high-fiving people and all of that. All right, you heard the word and you quickly move in joy. Look at the verse, verse 21. Watch what happens. Yet hath he not root, root, I'm sorry, in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. Stop. Okay. When, the, when you have a revelation of the word of God, the word of God starts coming into your heart. Watch this. Tribulation is going to come with that. Persecution is going to come with that. And then all of a sudden, you get offended because you don't think that there should be tribulation because of the word. No. With the word comes a challenge. Go ahead. Go to 22nd verse. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. All right, so now you take the word of God and now it's sown into thorny places. Notice all of these are conditions of the heart. All of these are conditions of soil. And so watch this. So if you take that soil, if you take that word and you put it then in soil and thorny places, the scripture says that the result is going to be choked because you're only using the word for one thing and not for the balance of everything that God has ordained for it to be. See, please understand the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he cometh, he becometh unfruitful. What happens? Because when you only use the word for one thing, 
There, there are billionaires right now that use the principles of the word of God for riches, but don't want Jesus. They don't want a relationship with Jesus. They just want the benefit of his principle. The Lord says, I want you to be well-rounded. Look at the 23rd verse. Re read that for me, please, Evelyn, because this is the one that you and I are supposed to be. Go ahead. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some 60, some 30. Watch what it said. Good ground is two things. You hear the word and you do what? Understand. You are not good ground until you hear the word and understand. Simple. What makes me good ground? I heard the word and I understood it. That's it. It's not difficult. It's not hard. It's not rocket science. I need to hear the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And what? In all thy getting, get what? An understanding. And then I become good ground. Why do I become the good ground? Because understanding leads to what? Wisdom. Simple. Simple. Now, let me ask you a question. When you watch Warfare Ecology, do you hear the word? Yes or no? Only you can answer that. Second thing, when you're on Warfare Ecology, do you get understanding? If you hear the word and you get understanding, according to the word of God, it equals what? Good ground. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. I'm gonna make it as plain and clear as possible. Good ground is not because you call it good ground. Good ground is because you hear it and understand. That's good ground. The atmosphere that causes you to hear and understand is good ground. Now, if you're on work for ecology, and you're hearing, but you're not getting an understanding, you're not focused because you're half in and half out and you're not getting an understanding. The problem here is, is that now the wicked one can catch it away. Now you can end up being stony ground, thorny ground. You could be all the different kinds of ground except the ground that you should be, shallow ground, but good ground, is understanding, is hearing and understanding. And you're going to reap 30, 60, and 100 fold. So I'm going to say something that I pray that it helps. Should I, this is a, is a question because I got to get into eschatology. Should I be sowing into warfare ecology? Should I be sowing into warfare ecology, eschatology? I'm, going, I'm, I'm just going to hit it as hard as I can. Should I? I need to understand biblically, should I be sowing? My God. Mm. In eschatology, warfare ecology, Tuesday, should I be sowing? Let's answer that. Let's answer that. What gives me the answer? Not because a preacher said so. Not even because you feel it. I am going to say today that the only way you should be sowing is that if you hear the word and you understand it, and that lets you know it's good ground. Simple. Wow. You shouldn't go anywhere that you don't get an understanding. Wow. Wow. Well, there's a lot of people that shouldn't be paying tithe in some churches today. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic, phenomenal. Dollar sign, General uh, of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Uh, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or, or mail to or mail to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina to seven four zero six um you've been challenged to sow a seed on understanding hearing and understanding the word 
and to place a value you so at the level that you feel that how, how did you start off with that you so at the level of when, you, when a person is sowing you so at the level that challenges your faith because there you faith go so at the level absolutely that challenges your faith so that's it right now it's all on you because i want to go into this teaching today Father, I set myself in agreement with all those that are watching and coming into the platforms as the man of God teaches, as they bring their questions in, as they sow their seed, we pray that you would bless them abundantly, bountifully, pressed down, shaken together, running over, cause men to give unto their bosoms also this day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Sell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. <laughs> Sell Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed. Wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, eschatology begins right now with Dr. Kevin Williams. Let's go into this teaching, and this is what I want to share with you, people of God. This is the first thing, and that is that when we're dealing with the last days, very key when we're dealing with the last days, um, end times. Here we are. All right. So if we understand the value of dealing with last days, what is happening in those last days? I wanna clear this up uh, pretty good and make sure that it's right, good. What is dealing with those last days? Evelyn, can you hear me? I wanna make sure that people can hear me. Yes, sir, I can. Good, all right. So when we're dealing with the value of things concerning last days, Let's go to the next level. The next level is, according to the word of God, a third temple is going to be built. A third temple is going to be built. In that third temple, according to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 2, 3, and 4, how we know that the abomination of desolation is taking place is because the Antichrist will stand up in the holy place and declare himself to be God. Evelyn, would you go to 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, the uh, verse um, 2, 3, and 4? I read thus, that ye not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshiped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. All right, he sits in the temple of God and shows himself to be God. He sits in the temple of God, y'all hear what I'm saying? And show himself to be God. In order for him to sit in the temple of God and show himself to be God, that means that the Jewish people that's in the temple has got to be accepting that he's the Messiah. I'm going to let that sink for a second. They have to be accepting that he's the Messiah. Very important. Very important. I told you we're going to shake things up today because I need you. I need your, your mindset to expand just a bit. So I don't know if the day is going to be a master's class in sense for some individuals because now your perspective and your view has got to become a bit more intense. Evelyn, if you would go to uh, Daniel, the ninth chapter, the 27th verse. And it reads thus, 
and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation. And that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. All right, now, here's the question. The question is, if he's going to stop the sacrifices, and I have other scriptures that support that, but if he's going to stop the sacrifices, then that means he can't stop something that is not happening. He cannot stop something that is not happening. Evelyn, would you go to Daniel, the eighth chapter and the 11th verse? Yea, he magnifies himself even to the prince of the host. And by him, the daily sacrifice was taken away and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The daily sacrifice was, this, did the scripture say taken away? Yes. All right. So if, this, if the sacrifice was taken away, then that means that they were doing sacrifices there. Somebody said, what's the problem? Don't worry about it. I got you. Let's look at, look, would you look at Daniel, the 11th chapter and the 31st verse? 7.21. Uh, Daniel eleven thirty one, And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. And they shall place the abomination that makes it desolate. They shall place the abomination that makes it desolate. What is the abomination? The abomination is not just the sacrifice, but the person that stands in and sits as the substitute for the sacrifice. Now we're getting to scripture very, 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 we're in scripture now. We're gonna get into other scripture that confirm what I'm saying because you have to understand what's happening. So the first question you have to ask is, in the tabernacle, in the holy place, in the holy of holies, in that whole atmosphere, what was the purpose of sacrifice? Atonement of sin. That was the purpose of sacrifice. When Jesus died, was he not the sacrifice that because of his one sacrifice and his blood being shed, there is now no need for any more sacrifices because Jesus became our sacrifice on that cross once and for all. Then if the third temple is built and it will be according to the word of God. According to Revelation, the 11th chapter and the second verse, for those that need New Testament scripture as well. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter and the fourth verse. When the third temple is built, will the Holy Ghost dwell in that temple? And the answer is no. Because the sacrifices that will be made, ritual sacrifices that will be made during that time, says that there is no acceptance of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. That means that there is no acceptance that he is the Messiah. This is why they're going back to sacrifices in the third temple. I'm going to let that sink. In order for the Antichrist to stop, we just read all the scriptures, to stop the sacrifices, the Jews are going to have to believe that he is what? The Messiah. Now, here's the next question. Why? Would the Jews believe that he is the Messiah? That's the question now. Why would they believe that he is the Messiah? 
they will believe that he is the Messiah because, you know what? Let's read it. Evelyn, would you go to Malachi, the fourth chapter in the fifth verse? Malachi 4 and 5. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. All right. Now, so in the Jewish belief, it is stated that they're waiting on Elijah to come and tell them this is the Messiah. Well, Elijah called fire down from heaven. Elijah, oh, we go in there today. Elijah called fire down from heaven. Elijah did many miracles. Who is going to do that in that time? that will be deceptive as a false Elijah to the Jewish people to tell, to tell people this is the Messiah. Let's go to Revelations 13. And let's start with verse 11. And let's take a look. First of all, guys, if you're getting understanding, would you send me a thumbs up, please? Mm -hmm. This is about understanding. This is not about making it difficult or, or trying, no. This is about understanding. Mm -hmm. Because please note that a a believer's test is not the same as a preacher's test. Please hear what I'm saying. A believer's test is not the same as a teacher's test. The teacher's test is based on how you respond in a situation after have been taught. So here it is that while you may be tested, how you learn something, know something, and then how you respond in a situation is my test. I have to make sure that there is understanding and there is clarity in order for you to be confirmed to say, I know it, I got it now. Evelyn, read. Do, Vanita, do we have thumbs up? Evelyn, can you see if we have thumbs up? We have thumbs up. Thank you okay. so much. All right. So uh, let's look at Revelation 13. Start at the 11th verse, because remember, what are we looking for? We're looking for what the, what the Jews are looking for. The Jews are looking for, according to Malachi, the fourth chapter and the fifth verse, that Elijah is going to tell them who then is the Messiah. So now let's look at the 11th verse. So start there and let's look at it and let's see the cunningness of the enemy. All right, go ahead and read starting at verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Wait a minute. He causes the earth to do what? To worship the first beast. To worship the first beast or to state he is the Messiah. Go to verse 13. Go ahead. And he doeth great wonders. So that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Stop. Who did that? Elijah. Let the God that answered by fire, let him be God. 
And in fact, I'll let you all go first. That's what Elijah said. And the prophets of Baal and the groves got on Mount Carmel, cutting themselves. And then when they could not get a response, Elijah got up there and called on the Lord. And the scripture says, and fire came down from heaven. So the false prophet, in order for him to be deceptive, the enemy who knows the scripture too, is going to use then scripture to deceive. Why will they be deceived? Because in order for you not to be deceived, you're going to have to have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth and he will guide you into all truth. How do you get the Holy Ghost? You must accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Let's go to verse 14. I want you to read verse 13 again and then go to verse 14. No, we're going deeper now into the understanding because we got to get it. Go ahead. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Go ahead. And he, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And th that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and six. Now here we have the false Messiah that is standing in the third temple, sitting in it, calling himself to be God. Now let's understand. Well, the third temple is gonna be built and it's called the temple of God. And if the third temple is gonna be built and it's called temple of God, then um, why won't God dwell there? It is called the temple of God. But how could it be the temple of God if the Antichrist, the Messiah, sits in the seat and says he is God? That's not God's temple. That's not God's temple. Now let's go somewhere. Acts the, uh, Acts the seventh chapter, go to Acts the seventh chapter uh, for me, Evelyn, and verse 48. Let's see something here. Glory to God. Acts seven and 48. Yes. How be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, as saith the prophet. Wait a minute. So the Lord said, I'm not going to dwell in that temple. I'm not going to dwell no more in a temple that is made with hands. There's a scripture. I'm not going to dwell no more in a temple that is made with hands. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians, if you would. Um, the third chapter, the 16th and 17th verse. Hmm. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. All right. Who's the temple of God now? You. We are. You. You. You're the temple of God now. That's why that temple, that third temple is going to be built. If they're making sacrifice and things like that, God says, no. He says, he says, please understand, I've already died. 
My blood has already been shed. So then what are they cutting to? I'm not going to dwell there because I'm dwelling in you. Uh, Evelyn, go to First Peter. First Peter, second chapter, fifth verse. Let's look at a couple things here. First Peter two. Two and five. Yes, sir. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Your sacrifices are spiritual built up here now, which means then that God is continuing to build you. You're continuing to grow in the Lord. You're continuing to be strong, but you are the temple. You are the, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. It is the spirit of truth. See, please understand something. If somebody, oh God help me. If somebody is not saved, And what causes you to be saved? You must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what caused you to be saved. You must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you are born again. Now, if you don't believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, if you don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah, if you don't believe that Jesus was God that came into the flesh, he came in flesh. He was God and came in flesh. Deuteronomy 6 and 4, the Lord our God is one Lord. If you don't believe that, then are you saved? No, you're not. Do the um, Islamic believe that? No. They believe that Jesus was here, but they believe that Jesus was a prophet, but they don't believe that he was the Messiah. So no, they can't be saved. Do the Jews believe that? No. So they have, so they all have that in common. And that's why. And I don't even have, I don't even have time to deal with the depth of it, but that's why it would be very easy for the beast, the antichrist, to be able to deceive the Jews, watch this, as well, as well as the Muslims. And the reason being is because the Mahdi of the Muslims, their Messiah is equivalent to also, because look at the Mahdi and their beliefs of, a, of a, um, when you're dealing with uh, eschatology of Islam, it's very similar very similar. And so the Jews are going to kind of follow right in line. When you read the Talmud and things like that, it follows right in line. So it's easy for that level of deception. See, the thing is not Jesus existed. It is he is God in flesh, dwelling among us. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. First John 1 and 1, 1 and 2. Was St. John, St. John 1 and 1, 1 and 2. St. John 1 and 14. And the word dwelled among us. And the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. God was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's, the, that's what separates what Islam believes, Jews believe, and Christians, or what I call believers, true believers. This is why in the final, in the last days, as we are in those last days now where everything is building up and all of this is happening, this is why it is very important for us to understand the specifics of what we believe. 
our conviction of what we believe. Because if not, we will side and slide right in and become the apostate church. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus has come in flesh. I know that probably that chat is blowing up. But in all that getting, get understanding. Get an understanding. Could God right now. Um, let's go over. Let's go over to Zechariah 14. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Zechariah 14. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to go to Zechariah 14. And um, okay. mm -hmm. let's look at it. All right. And um, would you start at the first verse <coughs> for me, please? And it reads thus, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of mm -hmm. Judah. Go ahead. And the, Lord my, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. All right, now watch this. I want you to go all the way to the ninth verse. Go ahead. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All right. In that day, there shall be one Lord and his name one, which means that, and this is where I get the scripture, that when he comes, he's coming, and he's coming on the Mount of Olives. That's where he's going to be. He's going to go through the east gate and he's going to defeat the false prophet and the antichrist and throw Satan in the bottom of this pit. Evelyn, would you go to Zechariah, the 13th chapter, the, 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 the sixth verse, because when he gets up there, because he's going to have to salvage and save when he gets there, read that one verse. This is very important. And one shall say unto him, what are those wounds in thy hands? Then he shall answer, those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Ah, stop. Why is that important? That is important because what it says is that the battle of Armageddon, when he comes through that east gate, when he fights, when he literally, and it's not really a fight, because the Bible says, according to Revelations, the 19th chapter, that he is going to defeat all of the armies of the Antichrist with the sword that comes out of his mouth. 
once he defeats all of them, and those soldiers, those Jewish soldiers are right there, they're going to say, who are you? And what are those wounds in your hand? And he's going to say, I was in the house of my friends. And at that moment, at that moment, they're going to realize you are the Messiah. Jesus, you are the Messiah. You know why? Because Jews do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah. They're still waiting on the Messiah to come. They do not believe that he was the Messiah. That's what separates Jews and Christians. We have the same beginnings, but different endings. Now, um, um, Evelyn, go to Hebrews. I want to go to Hebrews. I should have done that a little earlier. Go to Hebrews 9. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go to Hebrews 9. And it's going to make sense then about, and why, why are we going to Hebrews 9? The reason that we're going to Hebrews 9 is because Hebrews 9th chapter and 10th chapter gives you an understanding about why those sacrifices in that third temple are not the will of God. All right. I want you to start at the, uh, Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And the uh, Evelyn, I'm just going to have you reading for a minute. You're going to probably read the whole ninth chapter. I'll only interject okay. things. Uh, and the reason being that you got to see this people of God, you've got to know the word and you got to get an understanding of that word. And you got to know where that is. So you're not saying that this preacher said it. You're saying, I read the word of God for myself. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and start at that first verse, Evelyn, and let's read that. Go ahead. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tables of the covenant. And over it, the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Now, when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. And the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing. All right, so it didn't happen in the first tabernacle, was not yet made manifest, all right, because Jesus had not come in the flesh as of yet. The Christ has not come in the flesh as of yet in the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks, and divers washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Uh-huh, go ahead. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Wait a minute. Read that one more time, Evelyn. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, uh -huh. but by his own blood, he entered by in once. his own blood, he did what? Entered in once into the holy place. Having and obtained. Then... Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What, and what happened? Go ahead. Having what? Having, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having, e having obtained eternal 
eternal redemption for us who receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, which means that there's no more blood that needs to be spilled. So those sacrifices in that third temple is not of God. The act, that, that actually sacrifices in the third temple is blasphemous against God because Jesus himself has become our sacrifice. Go to the next verse, go ahead. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Now, please understand that when the Lord comes into our life, now, according to that 14th verse, when the Lord comes into our life, that scripture says right here, offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, which means that he's working on you. The Holy Ghost is working on you so that the struggles and the weaknesses and the challenges that you have in your flesh, even though you still may have them, they are getting weaker and weaker because the Holy Ghost is working on you that you will not be a slave or bound to those things any longer. Read then, um, hallelujah. Read then that 16th verse. Watch this. Go ahead. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. All right. Where a testament is, that word testament means will. That means a will. If, if somebody died, there has to be a will. Is there supposed to be one? There has to be a will. So all the things that you owned, if, if a person owned a lot of things and they died, there is a reading of the will. This scripture says, for, there, uh, for where a testament is, a will is, there also, there uh, must also, watch this, of necessity, be the death of the testator, of the person that owned it all. Read now, now that that makes sense, read the 17th verse, go ahead. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. That the will doesn't exist. The will, the, the will exists, it does. The will exists, but it is not in force or in power until that person dies. Go ahead and read the 18th verse. Y'all see where the scripture going. Go ahead. Whereunto neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people saying, this is the blood of the Testament, which God hath enjoined unto you. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission. There, without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. So now what we have to understand is, is that, watch this, is that the goats and the bulls don't have anything to leave you. So their blood doesn't count. Because it's not their book. It's not their law. Go ahead to the 23rd verse, Evelyn. We're getting on people's nerves today. Go ahead. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. Uh-oh, Christ should not offer himself often as the high priest did regularly every year. That means then that he would have to, according to that, 
according to that view, according to that understanding, according to that ritual, Jesus would have to die every year. Go ahead and read on. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Go ahead. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Mm -hmm. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He wasn't offered every year. Once offered. Once. Yeah. Now, we can get in that 10th chapter and tear up a whole lot of stuff. Because what we have to understand is that those sacrifices in that third temple ain't of God. Ain't of God. It's not of God. And that's why the Antichrist can sit in that temple and deceive with the influence of the false prophet. making everybody believe that he is God because they're believing the false prophet is Elijah. All right. Um, there's a part of me that just wants to deal with this 10th chapter. Lord, have mercy. Um, Evelyn, you want to go to the 10th chapter. It's going to be up to you, honey. We'll go there. Let's go there. All right. Go to 10th chapter. Start reading there for me, Evelyn. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. That means that those, those sacrifices of gold, goats and bulls could not make you perfect, could not help you, could not mature you, mm -hmm. could not bring your conscience to a place where it says, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to live in this sinful life anymore. That's why they had to keep doing it every year, because there was... Mm, that's why when the Holy Ghost gets in your life, he starts working on you to the point until even if you get in sin, you won't stay in sin because the Holy Ghost starts convicting you and says, all right, you've been in that long enough. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Go to that second verse, Evelyn. Go ahead. For then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. He came in the volume of the book that means that he came to fulfill the scripture. The power and the authority of the word of God. He came to fulfill the scripture. And that's why a body was prepared. Because he's the lamb without spot and without blemish. That got on that cross for you and me. So that when his blood was shed. He didn't, it didn't have to be shed year by year. Glory be to God. Go to that 10th verse, Evelyn. By the which where we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering so oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Wait a minute. He sacrificed 
Say that again. I want you to read that slow. Read that 12th verse slow because I want to make sure that we're clear. This is eschatology, guys. Watch this. 12th verse says what? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. One sacrifice for sin forever. The sacrifices in the third temple are not of God. Yes. Are not of God. Evelyn, I'm going I'm, I'm to get you to read to the 18th verse. Go ahead. Yes, sir. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. And no more offering for sin because when Jesus died on that cross, that was it. So what you're doing in that third temple, killing animals? The only thing that you're doing is preparing an opportunity for the Antichrist to be able to come with this false prophet and the false prophet acting like he's Elijah, saying that the Antichrist is the Messiah. And now the world goes after him because the false prophet is using the same, watch this, the same examples of acting like Elijah with deceptive miracles and, the, and calling fire down from heaven. Please hear what I'm saying. Please hear what I'm saying calling fire down from heaven because the because satan is using scripture to deceive many and cause them to then operate as the apostate church now i know y'all want me to uh, us to read the rest of the 10th chapter but we can't because we got to go i got to answer some questions now let me ask y'all a question let me ask you a question, because I know you want me to continue to go there. Now I need to ask you a question. If you got understanding today that things made, it was made clear to you now, you learned something that you didn't know before. You got an understanding about something that wasn't made clear to you, or you got an understanding about something that you hadn't had before. I need you to send a thumbs up. I need you to send a thumbs up. Because like we talked about in the beginning, the only way that you know that it's good ground is that you hear the word and you understand it. That you hear the word and that you understand it. Understanding says you're in the atmosphere of good ground. You're in the atmosphere of good ground. You're in the atmosphere of good ground because now you have to get in all that getting get understanding and all thy getting get understanding do you understand now why the sacrifices in the third temple are not of god do you understand now why the the holy ghost that 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 there is no spirit of god in that third temple do you understand now how the false prophet and the antichrist deceives Vanita, do we have a thumbs up? We have thumbs up. Excellent. Understanding is key. Understanding is key. Understanding is key. Understanding is key. And please recognize this, because I mean this with my whole heart. I don't know everything about eschatology. Because the Bible says, according to Daniel, the 12th chapter, that knowledge will be increased, which means that the Lord continues to unfold and unfold and unfold. But as he does, but as he does, we teach it, we impart it so that people can get an understanding. 
And that means the Holy Ghost has got to be present because he is the spirit of truth. He leads and guides us into all truth, which is what the scripture says, John 13. Vanita, do we have questions? Yes, sir, we do. All right. So people of God, this is what we're going to do. We're going to prepare to give in this atmosphere of what? Understanding. I got understanding. I can't be a better Christian. I can't be a better believer unless I get what? Understanding. Understanding lets me live right. Understanding lets me live better. Understanding causes me not to walk in confusion. Understanding causes me to open up myself so the Lord can order my steps. Understanding is the lamp into our feet and the light into our path. Understanding. Let's sow in this good ground. Let's sow in this good ground. Whether you're giving $5 or $500, whether you're giving $50 or $100, give on your level that challenges your faith. It challenges your faith. That challenges your faith. Get that seed in your hand. The question is just, just a moment. Dollar sign, General of Warfare. Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. You can text. Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You can mail your seed to GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. If you have the app GiveLify, you can put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box and you can give for payment link. You can use media at bishopbloomer.com. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. For Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com. You can mail it to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. And as we explained earlier, now the understanding of splitting the seed comes from John, the 12th chapter, the 24th verse. Ecclesiastes 4 and 12 says a threefold cord is not quickly broken, which means that Bishop Bloomer, you and myself, as we come together in agreement with the word of God, and with the seed that you sow concerning your vision or your need. One may plant, another may water, but it is God that gives the increase and God is going to give your seed increase. So right now, if you would, right now, so right now, if you would. So right now, if you would. So right now, if you would. Benita, if you would, would you give me uh, the first question? Um, they asked, why don't the Jews believe in Jesus? Wasn't Jesus a Jew? And how did they miss it? They missed it because they thought that he was going to set up 
a physical kingdom on the earth. They missed the fact of the whole process. They missed it. And they're still looking for, they're still looking for one to come and set up his kingdom on the earth. This is why the Antichrist and the false prophet is going to be so much of an appeal. They had an issue with Jesus because they didn't understand that God was coming in the flesh. And they and because of that, they missed it. They did. They missed it. And still, as they continue, there is a prayer that they pray regularly. It's three times a day that they pray this prayer of the third temple being built, the third temple being built, the third temple being built, that the Messiah is going to come. And that's a whole nother teaching that the Messiah is going to come and build the temple. One of the reasons I'll just slip this in here, but I believe that the third temple, the Antichrist is going to have a part in building this third temple. I, be I believe that he's going to have a part in building this third temple. That's one of the other reasons why it's going to be so easy for him to be able to go in there and sit and say, stop all the fighting. I am the Messiah that you were looking for. He's going to tell that to the Jews. He's going to tell that to um, the Muslims. He's going to tell that to the Hindus. He's going to tell that to Buddhists. He's going to tell that to those that are in Confucius. He's going to tell that to all of them. And ultimately, they're going to believe it. And even many people that are believers, according to the word of God, are going to believe it for a little while. And that's why the scripture says in Revelation, the 18th chapter, the fourth verse, come out of her, my people. The true church of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out of that. And, I, and one of the things that I do believe that causes the church to even be fooled for that particular time is because of wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching is dangerous. I did an interview um, the other night uh, on uh, about my book, actually last Tuesday night, uh, about my book, God Science. And the question was asked to me, what is the most dangerous thing to the church? And I said, sin is not dangerous to the church because Jesus died for sin. Most dangerous thing to the church is wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. When you look at Matthew, the seventh chapter, and it talks about false prophets, what is it really talking about? Wrong teaching. I'm not talking about, it's not talking about people running around talking about, yeah, yeah, thus saith the Lord. No, no, no. It's also talking about people that give wrong teaching. Wrong teaching. Um, what's your next uh, question, uh, Vanita? Um, they asked, what are some of the signs and scriptures of the second coming of the Lord? Well, uh, you have to look at, first of all, the prophecy, because Jesus, the, the scripture of eschatology that Jesus talks about is Matthew 24. So you have to look at Matthew 24, because the, the Bible says the prophets, I'm sorry, the disciples ask Jesus, what is going to be the sign of the, uh, the end time, the, the days of the end and, our, and your second coming? And so in Matthew 24, it reveals that. The next thing that we have to look at is the book of Revelations, a revelation, because the book of Revelation actually is scripture, it's nothing but scripture that reveals then the second coming of the Lord. Now, other scriptures, uh, Daniel 9, I'm sorry, Daniel 7, uh, verses 4 through 8. Um, Daniel 9 and 27, um, second, second Thessalonians 2, verses 2 through 4. Actually, you can read the, the second chapter of 
of 2 Thessalonians 2. Um, those are signs of the coming of the Lord. That there is going to be a, according to Daniel 9 and 27, there is going to be a peace treaty between the Palestinians and the Jews over the West Bank. There is, the Antichrist is going to sit in the third temple and declare himself to be God. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter in the fourth verse. That that third, temp that third temple is going to be built because the because John saw it in Revelation, the eleventh chapter, first, second, third verse, which is just to name a few. Um, next question. Um, they asked, "What is the significance, if any, of Macron or Macron trying to negotiate between the USA and Russia? And does the Normandy Pact coincide with prophecy?" When you're dealing with um, Macron and those that don't know um, what the um, what the person is talking about Emmanuel Macron, who was the president of uh, France. France has a positioning when it comes to uh, end of days. Daniel sees that in Daniel, the seventh chapter and the sixth verse. Um, Emmanuel Macron wants to be relevant and he is going to be re relevant and I would say is relevant to end of days because he's going to be a part of bringing some level of resolve. I think he's going to be a part. Um, I look at um, key players, key players are Russia, um, France, Germany, uh, Turkey, Iran, um, all of these are key players when it comes to um, end of days. I hope that helps. Your next question. Um, will Christians recognize that the thir third temple is not of God? Uh, if we keep teaching it, uh, I think that if these things have to be taught and they have to be understood. And there has to be scripture that supports that so that true believers will understand what's happening. Um, Israel is a timetable, uh, for in my opinion. Uh, when you're watching things concerning Israel, it's a timetable. Even when scriptures that give direction, the east and the west and the south, it is using Israel as its center compass, the east from Israel, the west from Israel, the south from Israel, the north from Israel, because Israel is, according to um, biblical stance, that compass. And why is that? Because it was God that made Abraham that promise in Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 18th verse of where the promised land is, which which um, Judea and Samaria, which is modern day West Bank is a part of that, which is why the Palestinians and Israel are in the greatest of battles right now. Wow, my time has escaped me, guys. So let's get ready to give, a, a, a please each and every individual. The reason that you are on today is because you're getting an understanding that you're learning something and that now as a believer, your mind is able to grasp something that it wasn't able to grasp before. In college, you pay a tuition. It's still a seed, it's still a gift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you go, when you deal with something, when it comes to even conferences where you learn, there is no way that you can go to an Anthony, uh, a Tony Robbins conference, and you have not already given your seed, your gift. 
And then in those conferences, they have regular, um, uh, a regular registration, but then they have registrations. Let's say a regular registration with Tony Robbins can be $3,500. And, th and that's not even VIP. Then VIP, you're giving 8,000 or 15,000 or 50,000 or sometimes 100,000 mm -hmm. predicated on what kind of personal information you're going to get in that is still a seed. Every time you get paid, Uncle Sam wants a seed. Mm. The principles of the word of God show us that everything is a seed. It's a seed. And so let's get ready to give. Would you put that up one line uh, right now? Dollar sign general of warfare. Let's give. Whether it's your your hundred dollars, whether it's your five hundred dollars, whether it's a thousand dollars, whether it's fifty dollars, whether it's five dollars, whether you have nothing to give, mm -hmm. and you say everybody that I am connected to, I am going to send this information to this this teaching to, so they can have you sowing into somebody's life. Those that are able, those that you have means, then according to according to Galatians, the sixth chapter, the fifth, fifth, sixth, and seventh verse, you know, you give to those individuals that teach you. So dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, paypal.me forward slash GGB Ministries. Text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. You can mail it to GG Bloomer Ministries, Post Office Box 3867, Durham, North Carolina, 27702. Give Lafay. Put GG Bloomer Ministries in the search box and payment link. Uh, you can do that by media at bishopbloomer.com. For Dr. Kevin a williams you can um sew it cash app dollar sign dr kevin a williams zell dr kevin a williams at gmail.com or you can mail it to 1822 short road greensboro north carolina 27406 split the seed we ask you whatever you're giving split it in half and give to bishop bloomer's ministry and to the ministry that God has blessed me with. And let's join together, the three of us, Bishop Bloomer, you and myself, and let's believe God for your vision. You're sowing into good ground. What is good ground? Good ground is when you hear the word and understand it. Hmm. Bishop Bloomer. Always fantastic. And thank you so much. You, you, you helped me today as I am preparing for some events that we're doing. Um, I want to challenge those uh, people who are watching in this last uh, few minutes that we have on today. Again, the word of the Lord is always, always powerful, always, always powerful. And I want to challenge everyone who is watching. There's several hundred of you watching collectively on all of our platforms right now. And I want to challenge every one of you after hearing the word of God today, uh, and you heard it and you understood it, you recognize that it is good ground. The ground that is good becomes fertile because you are sowing, you're challenged to sow at the level that you are expecting God to do extraordinary things in your life. And so uh, the challenge today is, uh, I, I, we just believe that we need 15 people to sow a seed of a, of, a, of a hundred. We're far from that, but let's do that now. Those of you that can do it, everyone else, Sow the seed that God has placed upon your heart uh, to release, but do not, do not be a, a, a hearer of the word and uh, become stubborn and not being a doer. All right. So everyone is getting a seed, whether it's a hundred or five. I believe that there's three people that are watching that can sow a $500 seed because of the level that you're at. That hundred dollar seed cannot lock or challenge who you are, okay? There's red on the bottom of your shoe. <laughs> it, you you, you uh, uh, it, it won't challenge you. And then there are those who if they gave $10, it is, a, it is a serious challenge for them to release that. 
So we're praying that you release at the level of your challenge and that your seed challenges you as a sacrifice. And I often say a sacrifice is not measured by how much you give, it's measured by how much you have left. Let's trust God in our seed sowing right now in the name of Jesus, okay? In about four or five minutes, we'll be going off the air. I want you to get those seeds in now. Dollar sign, General of Warfare, Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. What a great, great gathering of people who have come to the platform today to hear Eschatology Tuesday. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to... 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, um, uh, 27406, 27406, or split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. I believe very, very strongly that there are three persons who is watching right now who is going to make dreams come true for individuals who is less fortunate than you. When we get those challenges from those ministries, and I pray that we continue to get them, it is to double, it is to double your seed. Everything that you give is doubled because someone is challenging the seed that you're giving. And we're able to do what we do here at Warfare Ecology, as well as continue to minister and work on our missionary endeavor. And I believe that there are three persons who are watching right now with the five hundred dollar seed and i want you to release it in the name of jesus i know you're watching i know you're there i come against every distraction and every force that would hinder you from obeying the voice of god in jesus name then i believe that there's one person who is watching right now who god has placed upon their heart to sow the seed of the 1500 i i know you're there i i i know you are there i've been here too long not to know. I see you from where I am. And um, I'm going to ask you to obey God and release. I want you to uh, I want you to split the seed as you're sowing it right now in the name of Jesus. OK, so we're going into our final run of giving before we go off the air. And I'm challenging every person who is watching to get a seed, to get a seed and release it. Are you ready now? Are you ready now? Okay, get ready, get ready. Let's do this in the name of Jesus. Uh, dollar sign, General of Warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries. Text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559. Payment link. That's the one that's uh, those three persons. You might want to put it on your credit card. That one person might want to put it on your credit card or your debit payment link, email media at bishopbloomer.com. Dr. Uh, uh, um, Dr. Cash dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, uh, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to uh, 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406, 27406, all right? Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact. The moment the Lord speaks to you or lays on your heart to sow a seed into the ground that you're going to sow it into, the minute the Lord speaks that it's no longer your seed, it's no longer yours, it's his. Obey God in your release in the name of Jesus. Dr. William, final words for today. Um, people of God, you've heard the word. Um, Bishop Bloomer has an excellent platform for the word of God and for you to get understanding. And it's key. All I can say is that as you have been watching Warfare Ecology, I know that I can say this, and I would like for you to send letters confirming it to Bishop Bloomer Ministry. Send letters stating what you didn't know about eschatology. Wow. And wow. then you know and understand now. I would like for you to send those letters because I like to, for those letters to be read of people that get an understanding. I also would like 
for pastors to do the same thing. And let me tell you why I'm saying that. Because very seldom do pastors want to be able or are willing to say to other leaders, I learned something from you. When the truth of the matter is we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. Daniel learned from the writings of Jeremiah mm -hmm. as he gave him credit to that, according to Daniel, the ninth chapter, the first and the second verse. I would like pastors and lay people and leaders send Bishop Bloomer's ministry an email or letter stating, since we've been on a uh, warfare ecology, this is what I've learned. And I have a better understanding on this subject matter. I asked everybody. Please um, get my book. Uh, my book is God's Science. It is eschatology and the algorithm of God, eschatology at its best. Mm -hmm. And I think it will be a blessing to you. Uh, for those individuals that are sowing, continue to sow. And I believe that there are people that you know that God is challenging you. Even though I said 100, there are five people that God has challenged you to sow $1,000. So it, because you're on that level and there's certain things that will not happen in your life until you so on that level because it moves you to believe God in a different kind of way. Bishop Bloomer, I turn it back over to you. In this last minute or so, I don't wanna go off the air without us meeting that $1,500 challenge. And that's an easy challenge for the amount of people who have logged on on all of our platforms. It's a large amount, several hundreds of you are watching in the name of Jesus. And we have not because we, we, we ask not. And um, I want you to help me to do that right now in the name of Jesus. So those three persons who have the five, you can sew it. Those 15 people who have the hundred, you can, you can sew it. Or if everyone who is watching would uh, sew a five, a 10, a 20, a $50 seed, right this moment, we would knock this out of the ballpark. So I'm going to pray, put the ways of giving up, and we're going to see a miracle take place right now for a roof being put on a house in Nigeria. That's what we're going to believe God for this afternoon in the name of Jesus, you know. We're building our, uh, our uh, wisdom war chest right now, our understanding war chest right now. We are planting a field of understanding and wisdom in Jesus' name. So I pray that every person who's ever had a need and the Lord sent someone to meet that need would have that uh, return anointing that would have that 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 compassion in their heart to minister through their seed to someone who is less fortunate than them in this afternoon i pray that you would give seed to the sower and bread to the eater and prosperous and give us great testimony as we sow into this fertile ground of wisdom and understanding we place a value on it in jesus name amen dollar sign general of warfare Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com, PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give, text Bloomer to 844-889-1559, payment link, email media at bishopbloomer.com, dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams, Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com, or mail to 1822 Sharp Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27406. Split the seed, wrap these two anointings around your seed and double the impact and double the impact. The devil is a liar and the word that we speak are life and we send the word and it shall not return unto us void, but it will accomplish that which it was sent to do. And the only area that the enemy has been able to fight us in is the financial area because the word of the Lord is too potent for him to fight against. Everyone is sowing a seed right now. Everyone is sowing a seed right now and it's being multiplied unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over. In Jesus name shall men give unto your bosoms. Dollar sign, general of warfare. Zell Bloomer at bishopbloomer.com. PayPal me, GGB Ministries, text to give. 
Text Bloomer to 844 889 1559. Payment link email media at bishopbloomer.com. Or uh, uh, you can sow that seed directly to the doctor, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Uh, um, uh, um, all right, let me do it right. Dollar sign, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Cash app, Dr. Kevin A. Williams. Zell, Dr. Kevin A. Williams at gmail.com or mail to. 1822 Shop Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, 277, uh, two, I'm sorry, 27406. Split the seed, wrap this anointing around your seed, and double the impact. Look forward to talking to you and seeing you tomorrow on Warfare Ecology. We're having a discussion, Hellfire and Brimstone. We're dealing with that uh, doctrine of inclusion, and it has been a phenomenal journey. And when you get the inclusionists stumped like we had them the past two weeks, it's because the word of the Lord fights its own battles. You want to join us for that. So I'll see you tomorrow on Warfare Ecology. The paint on my door is blood. Well, I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Exodus 12, verses 12 and 13. That's the covenant of protection. The instructions are. Come, my people. Go home and shut yourselves in. Go into seclusion for a while until the punishing wrath is passed, because God is sure to come from his place to punish the wrong of the people on earth. Earth itself will point out the bloodstains. It will show where the murdered have been hidden away. Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21 in the Message Bible. Go home, shut yourselves in, sanctify yourself, sanitize your home, love your children, sow a seed and worship God. Bishop George Bloomer. God bless you. See you tomorrow on Warfare Ecology.